I realize the inside of a refrigerator may be an odd way to start a video about a two week garden update, but I did some harvesting for the local emergency preparedness fair and wanted to show you what I had harvested, minus the vegetables we already have eaten in our salads. These are literally softball size onions here. They are the biggest onions I've ever grown. These cucumbers are amazing. They're very juicy, flavorful. I try to pick them when they have small seeds so they're enjoyable to eat. Okay, out to the garden. Last time we looked, this plant right here had just broken ground. And as you can see, it's doing quite well. Let me move it out from underneath the wire. And these others have just gone crazy. I have been off grid for a week, been very involved in just keeping things running and have neglected the garden almost completely. But things keep on growing. We have tomatoes all throughout the garden, but as I mentioned, I've neglected what's been going on here. Something happened here, something's going on here. I need to find out what, what that is. It's plant specific. As you can see, this plant over here looks perfectly healthy. These two are the same variety. And that's one reason why I planted all these different varieties of tomatoes is to see how they would grow, what kind of production they would have. So some are definitely resistant to whatever this is. You can see on both sides, these look fine. There's a little bit of discoloration there. And this one looks perfectly fine. I don't know if you can read this, but this is the Sweet 100 tomatoes. And it says that it is disease resistant VF. Not sure what that means. I'm sure many of you do. I'll take a look at my Midlatter nutrient deficiency chart and see if there's something I can do for this tomato plant. I'm not sure what the variety of this is because it's one of my wife's extra tomato plants, but I do know it's an heirloom. Uh, she says it's getting too much water. That may be the case. It's right at the beginning of the automatic watering system. I'm not sure though. So I'll take a look in this. We definitely have blossom end rot and so I've added calcium in the form of lime yesterday. Hopefully that helps. But we're getting lots of tomatoes all the way down the line here. This will be interesting to see how these all grow out. This over here is the same variety of the one that we just looked at that had the blossom end rot. Nice big tomatoes here. This is the heirloom variety. And this one's split into twos. And so I just have been growing two stalks here. Get some interesting separation there. Don't know what causes that. Maybe it's too much water. If you know, please comment below. The potatoes are doing very well. I'm very happy with them. They're healthy. And then you'll see some spots in here like this. And then we have some areas that have some actually spots on the leaves. I'm really not concerned about that. Maybe it's because I'm just too ignorant about what's going on. I do see occasionally a potato sneaking up here like that. And so I'll just grab a little dirt that's in the area. Some sand and sawdust and throw it on there. I've had two or three that kind of poke through. But uh, to me, I've never had so much success with potatoes. that I. Because they're poking through means that they're getting pushed up from the potatoes from below. Uh, we did have a wind which really kind of tore things up here. And so you'll see some dead branches here which is because they were blown around by the wind and they got broken and they died off. I'll go through and clean that up. I'm just thoroughly impressed with the sweet potatoes. They have just taken off. It's a beautiful ground cover. I highly recommend these out front in your flower beds and flower boxes. No one would ever know that you're growing food right in front of them. I keep adding new slips as they come off the sweet potatoes. And you can tell the newer ones because they're a little bit yellower and not as big. This one I just put out just the other day, uh, two days ago actually, and it's doing quite well. I'm pulling out the last of the Back to Eden garden because as you can th see this is a very thick stalk and that's a very big plant. I probably can't get back far enough but this plant is huge. 
problem is it doesn't have any fruit no Brussels sprouts not enough nutrition for the plant to be able to grow any fruit so these guys are coming out just isn't worth it to take up the space and to have the possible disease and bugs coming from it now you compare these Brussels sprout plants to the Brussels sprout plants that were over in the Back to Eden garden and these are loaded with Brussels sprouts what's interesting is that these plants are against the house and they don't get much light at all but they have the nutrients to produce the fruit even though they didn't have much light they're pretty tall they kind of spread out which means they are looking for light so this area will become the lettuce bok choy swiss chard type of a growing area against the house that's west facing that means this is the east wall so we start losing light pretty early in the afternoon the smallest of all the broccoli plants is the one that gets in the light the most but anyway the smallest broccoli Brussels sprout plant is the one that's been producing the most Brussels sprouts and it's because it's getting all the light the water the food the drainage has the right temperature and so it doesn't have to struggle a lot to grow a big plant so it's growing fruit I'll be producing a video called the six laws of plant growth which will help you understand what six elements you need to control in order to have the healthiest plant and fruit growth here are the honeybee hives uh, as you can see we have three hives here all with their own queen and all doing different things the hive over here on the right has lost its queen and so we're, they're trying to requeen right now hopefully they'll make it the hive here on the left is now three years old and the queen is three years old and the hive in the center this is a, the second season for the queen I got that nuke last year as you can see the two bottom large boxes are the brood boxes where the queen typically lays her eggs and the other ones are the honey supers and I was just in there last week and each of these supers are pretty much 100% full and they're getting capped honey so we've got 30 pounds in each one of these supers 30 60 90 there's over 100 pounds of honey this one here has got about 60 pounds of honey and that one has is probably maybe 30 percent full of honey over there the apple tree is just absolutely loaded we have more fruit from our trees and plants this year than we've ever had my wife and I are sure that's because we have been giving them the weekly feed bell peppers doing great I need to harvest them I think we'll have to try some stuffed bell peppers but they are doing wonderfully well the plants aren't huge they're putting all their effort into growing the fruit and we've got some beautiful fruit here as you saw in the kitchen I've already harvested and been harvesting cucumbers and they are just putting out loads and loads of cucumbers here obviously I missed this one that one needs to come out these all are ready to be harvested and we'll use those in salads and green smoothies these are beautiful cucumbers really not much due to maintain them as you can see they're growing all the way to the top now I have cantaloupe on my cantaloupe plants here is a runner and what you do is you don't cut or, or a sucker depending on how you look at it you don't cut these off until past the fruit once it's past the fruit then you cut it off but you can see here this is already to the top and all the way growing another I don't know 18 inches to the other plant over here these plants are just really healthy they want to grow here's another one growing off this twine here's some watermelon I've got watermelon growing here I've got uh, little plants here's again watermelon growing up past this string I need to get that tied up here's a watermelon that I've added the thicker Baylor twine too you can see how much thicker that is than the twine that I got at 
Home Depot. From what I can tell, the 210 pound or at least 170 pound twine works best. I left this up here so you could see what happens when you get a lot of wind. It actually broke the plant down below here and so I'll take this plant out. But it wasn't the only part of the plant that was growing and it put its efforts into a, um, a sucker and so I can actually start running the sucker up. Looks like I've got a stink bug right here in the garden. Haven't done anything for them. I'm not too concerned about them right now because I don't see that they're doing any damage. The Kentucky Wonder is just putting out lots and lots of blossoms. They're grown up to the top and now they're growing down because I can't grow them any higher. And they send out additional runners. I did start separating them, but I thought, you know, that's kind of crazy. I just need to kind of run them up all one string. So that's what I've done. And I have Kentucky Wonder green beans here that I can now start harvesting. And we'll have those for dinner, either steamed or in a salad tonight. This is the first time I've grown beans, and they've done great. Of course, it's the Mittlider method, so everything seems to grow wonderfully well. These onions are just gigantic, and they don't really have any more room to grow. I think it's time for them to come out. Uh, typically, you wait for the stalks to kind of dry up and, and fall over, so... I'm going to wait a few more weeks and see if that happens, but uh, could not be happier with the production of the onions here. The strawberry plants are big and healthy, although I think we're pretty much past the prime strawberry production period, although we still have strawberries coming on. I, uh, I think these will be coming out shortly. I'm going to change to a different variety. Here are our red onions. Some people call them purple onions. When I got them, they were called red onions. You can see I cut them here, but they've already started growing the greens again. We have nectarines all over on the nectarine tree. This is uh, the first year for the nectarine tree. It was the first time it's ever had the opportunity to have fruit. We have avocados in the avocado tree. It's been growing prolific and it's going to get out of control unless I can start doing some trimming here. But there are avocados just everywhere all the way through the tree. And uh, this is, I think, a three-year-old tree now. We've had several avocados that we tried. The key was growing it above the ground. Here's some avocados. So that it didn't drown. Just a few months ago, I put a fig tree in for my wife because she tasted a fig and she loved it. Here are our blueberries. Really haven't done a lot for them other than I gave them some weekly feed. Until then they were just little scrawny plants. This is in, in the back to Eden garden area. So I don't have any irrigation back here and it's in the tree mulch. It's underneath the bird netting because the birds will eat every one of my blueberries. When I fed this pomegranate tree with weekly feed, these onions that had survived the winter from last year just exploded with growth. And so we have onions under the pomegranate tree that were not growing at all until they got the right amount of nutrients. And the last tree I'll finish up with are our pear trees. As you can see, we have pears everywhere. I've planted these all three close, 18 inches apart. And so we grow them as one tree, but they produce three different fruit because they're three different kinds of pear. So what we've noticed is since we started the mint lighter gardening method and have added the micronutrients to our trees and our plants we are getting so much more production we have healthier plants and we have more fruit I do want to mention one other thing if you've been watching my channel for a while you know that my wife is a certified master gardener and a wonderful gardener for the past 30 years she did not embrace the mint lighter gardening method at all to begin with but after seeing me bring in bushels and baskets full of produce for months she decided to start using the Mitlider fertilizers and the reason why I'm showing you her spinach is because she came back from a two and a half week vacation and said oh I forgot to mention something to you I had aphids on my spinach I gave them weekly feed and forgot to go back and spray them with soapy water 
but as soon as I get the weekly feed, the aphids were gone. I forgot to give them a weekly feed, the aphids came back, I gave them the weekly feed, and the aphids left. She said she thinks they don't like healthy plants. And because their plants are much healthier with the weekly feed that we mix ourselves, by using the midlighter micronutrients, all-purpose fertilizer, and Epsom salts, that they just leave because they don't like what they're eating. I can't tell you how many people came up to me at the emergency preparedness fair and, and told me they have the best garden they've ever had because they're using the midlighter weekly feed. Use whatever you want. What we're finding is the plants need 16 elements or nutrients to be healthy. And the easiest way that we have found to get that to them is by mixing our own very inexpensive weekly feed using the Midlighter recipe. You can try other things, and, and I hope things grow well for you. But for us, the fastest, easiest, cheapest way to get the plants exactly what they need is through the Midlighter weekly feed. I don't want to turn this into commercial, but I do want to share what we're doing and why we're successful. And that's the whole purpose of these videos. It's not to show off the garden, it's to help you be successful so you can grow your own food. This is LDS Prepper reminding you, if you are prepared, you shall not fear. And if you give your plants everything they need, they will be healthy, bug resistant, and produce high yields of fruit.